Moving on to volatility. So realized vol, uh, usual realized vol um, dashboard. Uh, you can see that the trading ranges were very tight. Therefore, um, realized vol on Bitcoin, that's the yellow line, got down into the 20s, as I already said. Um, and Ethereum got into the 40s. So these are extremely low levels. Now, this volatility cone that I've added, I've added onto the chart, to, on, onto the page today, kind of shows you that the green line was the current. So before the 4% pop that happened intraday today, you had the 7-day, 14-day, 30-day, all of those sitting on the bottom, which is the minimum of the year, right? So you had realized tracking at about 27 vol. Um, that's on Bitcoin. Now, on Ethereum, it was slightly above the lows, but, but not a million miles away. Um, now, implied vol, on the other hand, you can see wasn't really declining quite the same way. It was trading relatively flat on the week. OK, and that's because the market was pricing in some potential movement on today's number and maybe even again tomorrow on FOMC. OK, the implied move actually for today, if you looked at the daily straddle earlier on Bitcoin, was around 4%. So it was pretty well priced for the move that we ended up getting. OK, now the, the carry, which is the different, remember the difference between implied vol and realized vol, that's the carry. Uh, that was coming in around 30 vols on both the assets. And that was in very high percentile ranks, right? That was 90 plus percentile ranks. You don't generally get 30 vol points of juice to extract in, in, in Bitcoin and Ethereum volatility, basically. So it's pretty inflated, uh, which suggests that once FOMC is out the way tomorrow, um, these, longer, the, these vols are going to get slammed, particularly in the front part of the curve. Speaking of the curve, if we look at term structures, um, we can see here term structures are pretty steep in Bitcoin still. Um, you can see here, it hasn't really moved that much. We did get a little pop in the front uh, as those weeklies caught a bid ready for the events this week. But in general, still quite a steep contango. Uh, a bit more flatter a curve on Ethereum, as you can see. It's kind of trading more like a flat line around 70 odd. Um, and like I said, I don't believe that will persist, right? If you think about it, realize vols down here at 40, this front end has got a lot of room to collapse. So I'd expect this curve to basically look something like that by the end of the week. And you may see, you may even see new lows. You may, you may see Bitcoin vol front end collapse to 40, and you may see Ethereum collapse to 50, 50 something basically, right? So that would be my base case for what is most likely to happen to, to the curves uh, in crypto in terms of the term structure. Um, in terms of the spread, you can see there's a, a shift lower uh, for most expiries in this spread. So we continue to think this, this is going to keep compressing as we head into year end. If, if we get realized vol in the 20s or 30s, um, you've got to expect implied to get hit. You've got to expect skew to probably get hit. And you've got to expect this spread to get hit as well. Because these are all places where there's risk premium to be potentially harvested. So I'm looking for this curve to collapse below 10. If it gets down below 10, I will start accumulating. And I'll be happy to own some Ethereum vol versus Bitcoin vol heading into next year, probably parked in June 23, something like that. Um, and, and that will be a, a structural position that I'll, that I'll look to carry into, into the new year, right, if it gets there. Um, now, last thing, uh, based on this idea that I think Ethereum particularly is quite flat and this front end is going to collapse, I think, um, I think uh, cool calendars, uh, long, long calendar positions look like a decent trade in um, ETH. Uh, and I'll talk in a bit more detail about the trades that I've been doing um, later on in the video. Okay, um, now what's next? Looking at SKU, um, if we look at SKU, hasn't done a lot on the week, to be honest. Um, it's it's just, just like implied vol held up, or SKU held up as well. So you can see not much movement there, not much movement in the three month either. Uh, so SKU pretty stable, um, still very much for puts. So, so if, we look, if we look at the two dashboards, of the individual assets, we can see we got uh, Bitcoin skew at around 8.3 in that in that one month 25 delta, and we got ETH at 9.4. So very much for on the put side still, because the market is pretty clearly thinking that rallies will be short lived and find cool sellers. Okay, um, and if we get an explosive move in vol, it has to come from the downside. It's very unlikely to come from the upside. That's what the market is currently thinking and, and set up for. Now, if we were to smash through 20K on the upside on Bitcoin for whatever reason, and if we were to smash through, say, 1500 on ETH, then the game maybe changes and we start to see a pickup in vol on the upside and skew starts to reprice and things like that. But we kind of need quite a big catalyst to make that happen right now. 
Um, CPR wasn't it, clearly. Uh, it's kind of faded already in terms of risk assets, but crypto is hanging in there. Um, so I don't really know what's going to be the catalyst to make that happen before year end. So my base case would be that's probably not going to happen and the market is going to remain quite capped uh, in terms of spot prices. Yeah, It doesn't mean the market's going to collapse either by year end, but I just think it's going to struggle to break materially higher. Okay, um, and then uh, last, anything else to say on SKU? Um, the levels are quite equal. So Bitcoin and ETH, I'd say that those SKU levels are quite similar. Um, and, and I think that probably means ETH is a better own than Bitcoin in terms of SKU, just because generally when you own SKU, if you have a SKU position, let's say your long puts and short calls, you want what happens is you want the market to move. And if the market moves, you go into a short vol or a long vol position, depending if the market goes up or down. And if that happens, you want to be you want vol to be able to move. So, so if vol's parked at like 40, 45 on Bitcoin and markets rally. It's going to struggle. That vol is going to struggle to really go much lower. So it's going to be near the floor. So I don't think SKU is going to work very well on the way on the way up in spot. Whereas in ETH, with vol at seventy, it still has plenty of room to go down, and therefore I think SKU is going to perform better. So for choice, I would rather own ETH SKU at the same level um, than Bitcoin SKU. Okay, um, and then if we have a look at crypto option flows, um, so this doesn't include flows today. Uh, I haven't really had a chance to see what's going on today, and it's all a bit all over the shop. Um, but basically, um, for the last week, we had seen um, flows generally from the buy side as implied vols were looking cheap. So clients were generally looking to scoop up vol, um, and dealers were the ones who were selling. Um, so that's worked out okay for dealers in terms of realized. Um, the crash protection that was getting bought was in December, a uh, decent sized clip. You see these purp these pink lines here. That was the 12K, 10K put spreads in good size that went up. So deep, deep out of the money put spreads is a way to have some protection if the market goes down. Um, we also had buyers of the 15K puts, the 18K calls in December as well, um, buying buying basically gamma for, for the potential movement that they foresee this week is probably what they're doing there, picking up what looks like relatively cheap vol from a historical implied perspective, even though from a realized perspective, it kind of stinks right now because it's just not moving. Um, and then if you look at March 23 and beyond, we saw some 23 calls getting sold. Um, and we saw a calendar buyer, March 23, June 23 calendars. Bit of a strange calendar. Uh, looked like they were buying the June 25K calls to sell the March 36K calls. Um, so I don't know what the hell that type of structure, what the motivation would be behind that. But that was the trade that went up. Um, and then if we look at Ethereum, uh, calls again dominating the flow in Ethereum. Uh, short dated calls being bought in the 16th of December. So this Friday to end of December. So that's year end. Those those maturities getting bought around the 1350 and the 1400 strikes. So we kind of popped up to 1350. So that, that was a decent trade. I don't know if those trades have already been monetized, but, but those were the trades that were being bought. Uh, when you do those type of trades uh, in the super short dated, you do kind of need to monetize them quickly if you if you hope to make any money out of them, especially because we know we, we do get a bit of selling usually into the weekend in terms of crypto vol. Um, but obviously with DeFi TVLs getting getting crushed, um, the size of systematic selling coming from DeFi option vaults has also gone down dramatically. So we, we're not getting quite as much gamma supply as we were, um, uh, you know, a, a year ago, basically. Um, and then we saw call spreads being bought um, generally in the low 2000s. That was a long strike to sell the 2600. So that was going up in some decent size. Uh, people thinking that was a closeout of a short call spread. Um, and then um, some September 3500, 4000 call spreads also bought longer dated, far out of the money stuff. That, that looks like a kind of that's what we call like a European digital. Right. When you when you go for a tight call spread. 100% out of money, right? You're basically buying a 500 point wide call spread for a very low premium spend that's giving you massive leverage if the market was to ever go to that top strike, basically, right? So that, that's what we call a bit of a digital or a bet, basically, in option speak. Okay, um, moving on. Uh, what have I been up to? All right, thanks a lot, and I'll catch you guys next time.